Hello, hello. Hello. So I'm chatting through how to be optimistic using NLP and where this kind of comes into play, um, how helpful and potentially not helpful this could be. So in 2013, so it's quite a few years ago, I found myself um, with a startup business. So I founded a startup business and it was a fashion business and we brought the store to your door. So it was a ladies clothing business. It was built upon the direct selling business model and we we brought the store to your door. We turned, we used to say, we turned living rooms into boutiques and bedrooms into changing rooms. Now with this business, I was on the biggest growth accelerator in the world. I was winning business awards. I had a huge five year projection for my business and things were going pretty amazing. I was currently in, in the process of getting investment ready and I had someone on the board of Thompson Holidays, Next, um, some really big retailers who were interested in investing in the business to take it and grow it to the next stage. Now, I realized and identified in that business that for me to grow substantially, one of the biggest outcome, out, out, goings I had was in purchasing stock. So one of the biggest um, outgoings and one of the biggest kind of issues that was coming up in cash flow situations, because cash is king in startups especially, was purchasing stock, purchasing new stock. So I identified that what I needed to do was to make a deal with a um, supplier to supply me on demand so to do supply on demand so rather than me having to buy a lot of stock up front I was able to get supply on demand and so once I identified this I started pitching this idea to some stockists and I, I was pitching it to a few different ones and I managed to secure a deal and at that point it was like the business like the the road to the business success was there it was like a massive breakthrough moment and throughout going through that and you might be wondering like what is she on about why is she telling us about this and i'm telling you about this because throughout that process of get getting to that point i had to be so optimistic and so positive and be able to be fluid in my approach to success understand that i had to just keep going and keep moving forward and really embrace optimism in order to be able to make that happen and pull that together because there were so many setbacks there were so many failures there were so many times where i questioned why i was doing what i was doing and then i had this breakthrough moment where i was like yes we've got where we wanted to get to and then it fell through <laughs> the agreement that I made with the supplier fell through and it was such a low blow and for a long time it felt like forever but it was probably only a few weeks or a few months and um, I then began to wonder why I was running this business and where it was going to get to me. I had to be really optimistic in my approach and I suppose at that time this was before I trained in NLP myself I really had to embrace what I now know as neuro linguistic programming, but at that time I didn't know that's what I was doing. I really had to embrace the mindset of there's no such thing as failure, only feedback, and the law of requisite variety, which is something that I train within our neuro linguistic programming practitioner course, which is about being fluid in your approach to success, being able to change your approach whenever necessary in order to move forward and reach the success and the level of success that you want or reach a goal or achieve something that you want without being too fixated on the way that you're going to do it. So let me know if this is resonating with you, do give me a wave, you know, let me know if this is resonating. If you're watching the replay, give us a hashtag replay. And if you're on live with me, do give me a wave. So I had this situation then in my last business where I had this big breakthrough and it was all amazing and then it fell through and it led me to really question and I still had this mindset of, well, it's gonna work, it's gonna be okay. And I want to just ask you now, like at what point does optimism become toxic? Because I found myself in a situation where I was like, 
well, I have to stay positive. I have to make this work. It's going to be okay. It will be okay. It will work. But then there was also another part of me that was like, yeah, but you don't really want to do this. Yeah, but it doesn't, it's not going to work. Or then there was another part of me that was like, yeah, but who do you think you are to make this work? And there was these bit, bits of me, parts of me who were, who were, I'm talking about it like it wasn't me, third person. Um, but there was parts of me which really wanted to make it work and be optimistic and be positive. But then there was also parts of me that acknowledged that actually this really wasn't the thing that I wanted to do. And was it time to make a change? And I really had to sit down and question myself and ask myself like, am I being optimistic or is this just actually not the thing for me? Is my optimism becoming toxic, right? Is my optimism becoming toxic? So really what it, what what I learned from this and what's really important and what I talk about a lot now in neuro-linguistic programming is about checking in with ourselves. Now, I didn't know how to do that back then, but I did know that there wasn't, there was something that was like grinding and it was like friction and it did not feel good at all. I would literally find myself getting to the office and sitting and staring at the wall and not being able to move forward but then telling myself that if I closed that business, then it meant that I was a failure and I couldn't be a failure. And so it kind of became really toxic in the fact where I needed to really check in with myself and acknowledge that actually to move on, I needed to let things go. And that was still being optimistic and being positive. It just was honoring myself and who I am as well. So I want to talk to you about a few tips where we can use some neuro-linguistic programming and I think it's like common sense, right? So a lot of neuro-linguistic programming is stuff that you may find it makes sense as to how we think and why we think the way we think and how we behave and why we behave the way we behave and how to understand and acknowledge all of this. So the first thing that we need to do to become really optimistic and to develop our optimism is to, firstly, what I spoke about before. So, so understanding that there is no such thing as failure, only feedback, right? Next, thinking about the law of requisite variety, which is being fluid in your approach to success and understanding that, yes, you can reach your level of success or your goal or your outcome or whatever it is that you're working towards, but you can also change your approach and be fluid in that approach to making it happen. And also checking in with yourself and asking yourself, like, is this optimism or is this getting toxic? Like, am I honouring myself for who I am and also acknowledging the emotions that I'm going through when I feel like, for example, if I fail, I feel shit because it's shit to fail. It's not a good thing to fail, right? But being optimism and um, being optimism, being optimistic isn't necessarily about brushing over them emotions. It's about honouring who we are honoring what's going on and then being optimistic right so the steps that I've got here for you are using neuro-linguistic programming and and kind of really utilizing that so the first thing um, as well as what I just said is being grateful for what you currently have so really honoring and looking at what you already have within you and around you this could be the simplest things such as running water heating a roof over your head the things that you have already that you're super grateful for the smallest of things because when we're grateful for the smallest of things that we already have we can then become more grateful for the bigger things that we're working towards as well the sec second thing always expect things to happen but also be okay with them not happening always expect things to happen but be okay with them not happening so neuro-linguistic programming is about changing your mindset and it can also help you increase your positivity in life it's okay to expect positive things to happen but we don't want to have this kind of need for things to happen we want to expect positive things to happen but we also need to be okay with it not happening and releasing any attachment to the outcomes the third thing is asking yourself a better question. So if things are not going the way that you want them to go or they're not quite working out the way that you want them to work out, you may be seeing them as negative. Now, what we want to do is we want to reframe that and think about it as in, well, what can I learn from this? What can support me in this situation? What can I learn now that's going to support me to, um, and what, what can I learn from this that's going to support me into the future? Okay, so... The things that I just spoke about then to round up, 
the law of requisite variety, the mindset that we can change our approach and be fluid in our approach to success. There is no such thing as failure, only feedback. So when when we fail, you know, take the feedback, take the lessons from that, and I suppose that ties into the last thing as well. Also, checking in with yourself, ensuring that you're honouring yourself and who you are, honouring your emotions, not allowing it to become toxic because you're constantly checking in with yourself and honouring yourself. Be grateful for what you currently have. Always expect things to happen, but be okay with them not happening and release any attachment to the outcome and ask yourself a better question. So what can you learn from these situations that's positive, personal, and will support you into your future? So I hope that this was helpful. This was a quick roundup of how to be more optimistic using NLP. And um, I'll give you an example from my own experience as well and how I've used this in my own life and in my own business. If you do want more training on neuro-linguistic programming, we do have our Change Your Mind, Change Your Life workshop running. If you're on Instagram with me, you can pop me the message for the link. If you're on Facebook with me, the link is in the description. If you've got any questions or you found this useful, please do let me know. Pop us a comment or a message if you've got any questions. Have an amazing week and I'll catch up with you all at the same time next week.